Hi, everybody. How are you doing? We are very excited to be here. This is our first one, so kind of bear with us, but we uh, are really excited to show you all the cool stuff. Um, a lot of people are like, make it simple, make it easy, but make it fun. So we really kind of listen to you guys, and we're going to kind of go through it a little quick, but we'll be set back up over there for you guys for any other questions. And a bonus, if you guys are interested, I don't know if you've seen them yet, but we're going to go through them as the pipe cleaner people. They're really popular, they're awesome, they're cute, and they're real easy to make. So we brought extras. So if you guys want to make one, come see us, and you'll be able to make one really quick and take them home with you guys. OK, so we're going to get started. So day one, craft is the tabletop football. This is good for junior primary and pre-primaries. Most of the materials we need, we're going to go through real quick. So you'll need a white 11 half by 8 half shirt box. You can uh, get those through Uline. And then if you're wanting to keep it kind of very simple, you can actually even get these at the dollar store, Dollar Tree store. There's five boxes for a dollar, and you only need one side, so technically 10 kids for a dollar, so that's really a good savings for you guys. Uh, next, you have an option between a half field or full field, and you'll be copying those onto green cardstock. So depending on the size of your box, you can either minimize it or enlarge it however you guys need to. You can do one whole sheet or half sheet, however it's going to fit into your box. The, uh, let's see here, white poster board that we have. You can also use as an option as cardstock or copy paper on cost. You'll be cutting those down to the, um, um, but uh, you'll be cutting those down to size for the uh, people, yes, on the box. Thank you. Uh, the international flag pattern and the verse with the soccer ball pattern will both be copied onto white copy paper. Then you'll need coffee straws, two per child for the opponent's game of soccer ball, or football, I'm sorry. Then the uh, soccer ball itself we used is the white air dry modeling compound or model magic, and you'll be using those. If you get the four ounce pouch, it'll accommodate about 75 to 80 kids, so you can get a lot out of the model magic itself. So if that is kind of still a too much of a cost, we have other options as well where you can use either a cotton ball, pom-pom, a marble bead, or even uh, you can crumple up some aluminum foil and roll it into a ball as well. So there's a lot of different options for that for you to do. So the additional pre-prep, or I'm sorry, the basic supplies that you'll need is a office paper cutter to cut down everything to size, scissors, glue sticks, and then colored markers or highlighters. Then from there, the pre-prep that you'll need is to cut openings one and a half inch wide by one inch high for goals at each end of the boxes. Then, um, let's see, you'll be cut, that's where it is, the cutting the poster board down to the 11 by one and one quarter inch strips for the sides, that's where it was. So then you'll make a marble sized amount of the model magic for your soccer ball, and then they can kind of color those during your direction steps, which is what we're gonna go to next. So class time directions would be to take the two half or the full sheet of your soccer field. You will glue stick that to the inside bottom of the box to create a complete field. There should be a circle in the middle and the goals on each end. To simulate a crowd of spectators, you will use markers to cover one side of each poster board strip with tiny little circle dots. Uh, then glue stick them to the inside of the box along the top edge on both sides. From there, you will cut the flags out, the verse and the soccer ball. You will glue stick the flags and the verse to the outside of the box and the soccer ball to the center of the field. Now you are ready to find an opponent and play some football. All right. uh, the extra craft for, craft for that day would be the tie snake. It is very simple and easy to do. You just find a really awesome tie in your dad's closet or maybe just go to Goodwill or see if anyone wants to donate some of your ties out. Uh, simply inside of there, you just use some like plastic grocery bags, about three of those, you just kind of stuff them in there. You can also use a coat hanger to stretch it out, and then you can form your snake however you like. Then you use uh, two glue dots for the googly eyes on top, and then one more for your little red ribbon for the snake uh, tongue, and you have your little tie snake. So, simple, easy. Day two craft we have is the mini globe. This is good for junior primary and pre-primary. Some of the materials you'll need is a seven inch black coffee straw. You will cut that down to a one and three inch piece. You will need a three millimeter white Chanel stem, or we call them pipe cleaners. Um, you will cut those down to four inch pieces. Then the white cardstock you will use for the verse pattern. Uh, you can also use copy paper. 
Um, we actually even use for ease, because we prep about 1,400 kids, so we kind of make it a little bit simpler. You can even put it onto like address labels, and then you just peel and stick it on. It's, it's pretty simple. Let's see, from there, you will have a 9 by 12 inch green craft foam sheet. You will cut those down to a 1 and 3 quarter inch by 2 and a half inch size. Then the blue cardstock will be cut down to a 2 by 2 and 3 quarter inch size. And again, you'll be using the wonderful air mo dry modeling compound or model magic to make your world. So we'll have those as well. You will have mini suction cups. Those you can get at Uline as well. The order number is on there, but it's a three quarter inch suction cup. So it's just a tiny little suction cup for you. And then overall, you'll need about six glue dots. All right. Basic supplies would be the office paper cutter, scissors, blue and green washable markers, plastic wrap to seal up the model magic until you're ready to use it, and then a zippered baggie. The only other pre-prep that I didn't kind of go over would be to make sure to open the package of modeling compound and divide it into the pieces that you need. It's about a one quarter inch diameter ball, uh, and then just put it into saran wrap and then put it into a Ziploc baggie so it stays kind of soft until they're ready to use it. We recommend to do that like closer to your VBS time so it just stays real tender or soft um, until the time that they use it so it can be more pliable. All right. So moving on to our class time directions here, you will take a piece of the coffee straw, press it into the hole on the top of the suction cup, take the piece of Chanel stem and wrap one end of it around the base or that top part of the suction cup. You will then roll the piece of modeling compound into a ball, then carefully press it onto the coffee straw. Next, you will then color the ball so that it looks like a globe, remembering that there's more water than land. So start with the green marker and just color, color a few areas of land around it, like so. We recommend that way just because it doesn't get all over their hands and stuff so they don't leave your craft area all colorful for that day. So always recommend washable markers um, but then and wet wipes. And then from there, then you'll just do the, bl the blue marker just to kind of show the representation of water. Next, you'll bend the Chanel stem and around the globe, then tuck the end of the stem down into the top of the coffee straw. Adjust it as necessary so that the curve of the Chanel stem follows the curve of the globe, which will then look like that. <laughs> so the base that you're gonna work that it'll be placed on is you'll apply four glue dots to the back of the green foam. You will press that down onto the blue cardstock, rectangular kind of centered, so you have a blue border all the way around. Then you'll apply the last two glue dots to the back of the memory verse, then press that into place near the bottom of the green foam. That way the top half you can place your globe right on top. So they can take and put that on the dresser or wherever they like. All right. Day two extra craft was Let's Face It. Again, this is junior, primary, and pre-primary. Very simple, easy. Kids love it. They had a lot of fun with it. And it's basically you will do the uh, Let's Face It chart pattern. You will copy that onto bright yellow cardstock or whichever color you'd like, and then one dice per kid, and then just blank copy paper or just blank sheets of paper for them. What you'll do is you just roll the dice. So she's got a four. So you'll go down the first column. That is the size of your face. And then you roll again, and you'll see what kind of, what is that, the hair, the hair and then the eyes. Um, and it's just kind of like something fun for them just to kind of see what kind of faces they make. So that was our extra craft for that day. All right, our Mud Hut Missions Bank is day three. This is also good for junior, primary, and pre-primary. Materials you'll need are the eight ounce plastic deli container with lid. You'll need light brown craft roll paper about, and you'll cut it down to a one and a half by 14 inch strip. You can also use like brown paper baggy socks or anything like that for a cheaper route. You will then use brown cardstock. That'll be used for your roof cone pattern and your thatch triangle patterns. Again, brown cardstock can be a little bit challenging to find or a little bit costly, so you can actually even still use construction paper as well um, for that part. So you have an option there to go a little bit cheaper. From there, you'll have the verse pattern, which gets copied onto white copy paper. All right. Basic supplies for that would be scissors, quarter-inch hole punch, glue sticks, craft glue, and transparent tape. The uh, other prep, pre-prep that we recommend is uh, to, you'll have to pre-hole punch your deli containers. So you'll just use a one quarter inch hole punch, punch two holes about a half inch apart, just below the rim of the container, then use scissors to cut away uh, the plastic between the two holes, creating a narrow coin slot. The other thing we've also noticed too is you could actually just hole punch all the way across about five or six times, so that way a quarter can fit through there, and you can totally do it that way. So you don't have to get to exacto knives or anything more dangerous. So 
Uh, from there, you will um, go into the class time direction. So you will take the long strip of brown paper and crumple it into a ball. To soften the paper and create lots of creases, continue to press on it and roll it around in your hands a while. Kids enjoyed that. Then uncrumple the paper carefully so it doesn't tear and uh, smooth it out so that we have kind of like more of the mud texture to the paper. You'll then glue, apply glue stick liberally to the strip of brown paper and then wrap it around the outside of the deli container. Using scissors, you will open the coin slot area that we had just pre-punched, uh, pushing the brown paper through the slot. You can then fold the paper down inside of it and glue stick it as needed to the container. Uh, next, you will do the glue stick for the Bible verse. You'll place that onto the side of the hut just below the coin slot. Then on the directly opposite side of the uh, coin slot, you will place the black rectangular uh, square onto the brown paper to assemble as the doorway. See, next you will then press the lid onto the container, and this is where you work on the roof. So you'll be able to cut out the large brown three-quarter inch circle. That'll make a roof cone by overlapping the edges to the line on the pattern and taping it to the seam to secure. So there's a pattern actually on the cone itself, so you'll be able to see, they'll be able to tell where to stop to make it the right size cone if you're using that size deli container. So once you tape that, you'll be able to place it right on top of your lid there, and it should fit perfectly. Alrighty. And the next thing that they'll be doing would be cutting out the thatch triangles. All right, so then what you'll do is you will then, on the pattern itself again, you'll start at the tip of the cone and you'll use the craft glue, tacky glue, uh, not glue stick because it won't hold very well. You'll glue, glue down to about where the line is for it, so from the top down. You'll take your first four triangle thatches and you'll press them into the glue directly over the four small triangles printed on the cone. So everything is, is on the pattern for you. The points of the thatch triangle should line up with the point on the cone. Adjust as you need to. Then you'll take the last remaining four triangle thatches and then you'll add some craft glue to there as well uh, to each one and then press them over the areas between the first four triangles so that way it completely covers that cone up for you. Once that is all done and there's no gaps, you have your hut lid, roof. And there's that one. Day three extra craft we have is the pipe cleaner people. They are our favorite people. Uh, you can use those for junior primary and pre-primary. So the materials you would need is tan or brown pipe cleaners. Just make sure they're two of the same color for the kiddos. And then you'll need solid color plastic straws. They're about five inches in pieces, so that you'll cut them down to the five inch piece size. And then pony beads, approximately seven per kid. You can do any colors, metallic or whatever, but pony beads it is. Then 11 by 16 inch or 16 millimeter natural to brown color wood bead. You can get those at Hobby Lobby or online if you need in bulk. Um, I lucked out because I got a 20% off coupon and I used that and got a couple free, so. Um, but you'll just use those for the face. And then basic supplies is scissors and a, either a fine point permanent marker or just even a, a Crayola marker will work just fine to make the face. So the class time per Directions would be to take the two pipe cleaners, hold them side by side with the ends lined up. Then you'll bend them in half so that they all four ends meet. About one and a half inches down from the top um, of the bended, you'll bend it and twist the pipe cleaners two or three times just to kind of hold it in place as you put the um, head of the bead bead head on to the pipe cleaner. Um, we recommend you kind of twist it on, just make sure the top is pinched really tight and then just kind of twist the head on and it'll go on real easy. You'll have some left over on the top and then you'll just kind of fold that down on either side that kind of makes his either mohawk or his hair or however you want to do it. However he feels for that day. Uh, then you'll take two of the four strands and spread one out to the right and one out to the left. That'll become his arms. You will then bend them in half that kind of supports his arms as well. Okay. Um, from the trunk of your pipe cleaner person, hold the two remaining strands together, and you can thread either three pony beads or one straw piece onto them, depending on however you guys want to do the, the body part of the uh, pipe cleaner person. And then you will um, twist, oops. Twist and hold the beads, that will, it'll hold you inside. And then the remaining strands will be the legs. So hopefully you can see that. Let's see here. Then you'll add a piece of plastic straw to each arm and each leg uh, of the plastic straw. Then for the hands, twist the ends of the arms and bend them slightly to hold the beads and plastic straw pieces in place. 
Make loops at the end of the legs for the feet and bend them to hold the beads and plastic straw pieces in place. And then, of course, make your little creative face on your little people. Very easy. All right. Mosaic Cross is going to be our day four craft. And let's see, that's this one that we're going to go over is for junior and primary. This one, material-wise, you'll need a compact disc. You can get those either donated. It can even be old CDs that people just don't even listen to anymore because it's all digital. So I'm sure there's plenty of CD rounds or CDs around that you guys can use. Um, but you can either donate them or get them in bulk packs. It's just something to use for your mosaic cross. So you will need that. And then black cardstock, you'll use that and you'll cut that down to a five by five inch square. You will then actually, with the CD, you'll be tracing around it to make like a circle on one side of it. Can't really see it, but yeah. Um, then you'll need a medium shade and a light shade of blue cardstock. And you'll also need a medium and lighter shade of green cardstock. And you'll also need a thing of white cardstock. All of those will be cut down to a three quarter inch size square. So they'll all be the same size. Then you'll use white copy paper for your verse pattern. It's very tiny, but there it is. Um, and then an option that you'll need if you want to finish it off is uh, Mod Podge. You can just kind of brush that over at the very end. Basic supplies you'll need is office paper cutter, pencil, scissors, glue sticks, one inch foam brush if you're going to use the Mod Podge, and then zippered baggies. Let's see here. So the only other pre prep we kind of recommend, since there are a lot of moving parts to this one, is just to uh, prep all of that stuff into a Ziploc baggie. So you put the compact disc, the black square, memory verse. 12 medium blue squares, 12 lighter blue squares, 8 medium and 8 lighter green squares, and then 6 of your white squares along with the verse. So that way it's all together in one. And that's basically everything that you would need to make the mosaic cross. All right. Next would be the class time directions. So then you will place your black square in front of you, blank side up, so that way the cir not the circle side that we had traced. So this is the blank side. You'll then apply glue stick to the bottom third of the square. Beginning, now begin uh, placing colored squares closer together, but not touching so that we have some black in between so it'll look like the mosaic. Uh, line it up across along the bottom. For the most part, keep the blues together and the greens together because as you're building the mosaic, you're trying to represent the world still. So of course, the blue for the water, the green for the land. Uh, you want to have the green in the middle surrounded by blue, um, but it's up to you how you want to design it, just kind of keep them close together. When you've finished a couple rows, add more glue stick to the black area and just keep going until it's fully completed. When you filled up the black square, it's time to add a cross. Start by glue sticking a white square to the center of the third row from the top. Then glue stick the memory verse into the white square. Okay. Next, glue stick one of the white squares above, one on each side, and two below the memory verse square to create your cross. Flip your mosaic over at this point and use scissors and cut around where the marked circle is to get your wonderful round mosaic. And then finally, add plenty of glue stick to the compact disc CD and then press the mosaic circle right onto the CD. And then your other option at this point is, if you would like, then just to use the, the Mod Podge on it to give it more of that shimmer. We have a simplified version, version, which I think he has up there as well. This is for the pre-primaries. It's pretty much the exact same thing, just the square's a little bit bigger and the cross is just a template square uh, or a template that you can just simply cut out and put on so there's not as many moving pieces. All right. Next, we have the Day 4 Extra Craft. It is the uh, backpack zipper pull. There are different levels of complexity to it, so it just kind of depends on how the kids are with their beads. So like the very younger pre-primary ones, you would just take your elastic cord, you would fold it in half, and then they would just simply feed the beads on and knot it at the end. Um, then they can get a little more complex where it's where they do the one bead, but it's kind of like a threading through sort of design. And then from there, they can even do two beads um, to make it a little bit harder or more, you know, dynamic maybe. So other than that, you just need a small split key ring for the very top, and then they can put that right onto their backpack. All right. Next, we have day five, which is our kindness cards. Sorry, I'm going to take the off. All right. The materials for this one would be colored standard craft sticks. You'll need about seven per child, but you can order them directly as colored. You have an option too if you wanted to color them yourselves, but you know, it's about the same price. It's pretty cheap, but who has that time? Okay. Uh, poster board. So you want to cut the poster board down to a four by two and five eighths inch piece. A number 16 rubber band. 
That way it's nice and thick to hold on to what we're going to be doing with that. And then a jumbo paper clip per kid. You'll be actually bending that open to a V shape. And then you will be using brightly colored cardstock or colored papers, just depending on your cost effectiveness. You'll be using the kindness cards pattern that we have supplied and also the card uh, pocket pattern. And those again are all on just different colored cardstock. See here, and then just a piece of a two inch duct tape for the back side. Basic supplies that you'll need is the office paper cutter, craft glue, glue sticks, transparency tape, scissors, and zippered baggies. The additional pre-prep would be, again, is just to put everything into a baggie because, again, it's got a lot of moving parts. That way every kid has all their stuff. You just place seven different colored craft sticks, poster board, two mini clothespins, rubber band, modified paper clip, and the kindness cards and kindness card pockets into the zipper baggie. Especially for the younger kids with the cutting, it can be a challenge. So we do a lot of that pre-prep as well. So it's just pretty much just kind of assembly at this point. All right, so the class time direction would be to make the kindness cards display board, apply craft glue to the piece of poster board, edge to edge, and then carefully press each craft stick onto it. The sticks need to line up with each other and cover the poster board completely. Flip the display board over, then take the V-shaped paper clip and center it along the bottom edge with the smaller side of the clip against the poster board, uh, then tape it to the poster board with a piece of that two inch duct tape. Next, you'll cut out the kindness card's pocket and fold at each dashed line, then tape the side flaps to the back flap. Glue stick the pocket to the back side of the display board over the top of the paper clip, so it kind of hides it. And then it also holds your cards. All right. Next, you'll stretch the rubber band around the display board between the top two craft sticks. Then choose one kindness card to clip to the front to the rubber band with the two mini clothespins. And that can be like kind of what they're gonna work on for the day. And then place the remaining kindness cards in the pocket on the back side of the display board so they can keep rotating it out each week, each day, however they like. All right, the uh, pre-primary version is pretty much the same thing, it's just dialed back, so they're actually using the um, multicolored fun foam. Just cut those down to six and a half inch strips. You'll actually use corrugated cardboard as well to, to place it on, so it's just a little bit easier. The V-shaped paperclip actually slides right up inside of the cardboard, so it's another simple piece there. And then it's just a larger envelope on the back, and the cards are, are bigger as well, so it's a little bit easier for the little ones to use. All right, and last but not least, we have D5's Extra Craft, which is just a traveler's tic-tac-toe. And it's, again, simple. You just color, use color cardstock for the board pattern and then white cardstock for all the game pieces, which are the little feet. You can all give them just all the different kind of neutral color browns and stuff to color the feet in, and you have your tic-tac-toe. That's it.